Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today my whiskey is not so fine. It's a quite extreme, uh, not quite, a real extreme whiskey. It's the Octomore Edition 06.1, 57% ABV and the mostly peated whiskey worldwide ever. I do not like extremely peated whiskey. No, not at all. So be careful what I say here. Uh, <clears throat> this won't be my favorite. I had in the past already two of them, I think. Um, and uh, Jim McEwen, the head distiller of Bruch Laddy, where the Octomore whiskey uh, is or was produced, this whiskey was produced, um, showed me a bottle of a clear uh, uncolored liquid and said this is Octomore. It was in the year 2003 or 4, four I think, 2004. It said you have to taste it and I took a nose and said no thank you, not for me. And all the other guys standing around, oh I want, I want, I want, and said no, not for me. So whatever I say to this bottle, be careful, the extreme peaty, peat smoke whiskies are not my favorite. I got this bottle from the distributor, so I have to say thank you to him. Uh, yeah, but I'm free in my opinion. <laughs> so what's said on the bottle? Uh, Octomore, it's English, and here's the pronunciation. Och, Octomore. And uh, edition 06.1 ppm 167, 167 parts phenols on the barley, and a typical extremely pity whiskey from the south coast of Isla, like like a Woolen, Lafroig, or Artbeck, they have 40 to 50 ppm. Um, <clears throat> in the beginning, in 2004 or 2005, uh, Bruch Laddie, uh was able to produce an 80 ppm Octomore and uh, then with a lot of experiments experiments they were able to increase this peat level more and more until they reached uh, in 2009 this 167 ppm top level ever. So this is the most peated whiskey in the world aged five years Bruchleri Progressive Hebridian Distillers, very progressive. Yes, they're looking for new. Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Ah, and here is said Scottish Barley. Um, the Scots uh, drink so much beer and export so much whiskey that they have to import barley. And for this Octomore, they use only Scottish barley, not imported barley and this is one of the unique selling propositions of this uh, single malt whiskey. Uh, Isla single malt scotch whiskey distilled, matured and bottled at Brigletti distillery Isla Scotland. So they bottle themselves, one of the very few distilleries which bottle themselves. 57% ABV, product of Scotland, Jim McEwen head distiller. We believe Terrar matters. We believe in Isla. We believe in people. Uh, they uh, they have some uh, handicapped people on site. We believe in authenticity, provenance, and traceability. So Scotch barley means traceability. We believe in slow, slow, slow food movement. We believe in challenging convention. We believe in the soul of the artisan. So it's an artisan crafted whiskey. Uh, and when I looked at the bottle, I saw a writing here on the top at the tin uh, covering. Uh, on the rinds of Isla, above the village of Port Charlotte, which is a little bit outside Loch Indal, uh, at Loch Indal, from seen from Brehledig, a little bit to the uh, southwest, is Octomore Farm. 
Ach, the more, the large eight, it was said, uh, has its origins back to the time of the lords of the isle. There was, uh, there were a castle, and the lords uh, reside there, and they had a a kingdom covering the isles, lord of the isles, and long before, the dawach, dawach was a loose measurement of Pictish, or Pictish origin. The Picts were the inhabitants of Scotland before the uh, Celts moved in from Ireland and before from the continent, from Bavaria, they moved up. The equivalent, uh, so the, the Dabach uh, was a loose measurement equivalent to a town's land of around 20 houses at a time when individual farms or money did not exist. So there the name Ochtemor came from. And uh, there was a family, yeah, I read it here, uh, in homage to Ochtemor distillery, uh, where nobody knew, knows where it reside, resided, it's completely gone. A brilliant tragedy of the Montgomerys and their long lost Isla distillery. They found the name, I think, on a gravestone. This limited edition release of the world's most heavily peated whiskey uses barley malted to an extraordinary 167 ppm. Distilled in Brickletic's tall, narrow necked stills, it is a velvet glove round an iron fist. The iron fist is the smoke, uh, the pit smoke, and the velvet glove are the tall stills which produce uh, a smooth alcohol. Wow. Told quite a lot, quite a long time, haven't I? So 57%, you see my carafe with still water in the back. I never drink whiskey with such a strong ABV straight. I always dilute. <clears throat> Holy shit. It's so extreme, it bites in your nose. This peat smoke is, is really, really, really strong. And this gives you a, a cold feeling in your nose, nose together with the 57% ABV. It's, it's a very cool feeling in your nose. Cool. After half a minute or so, then you get used to this smoke. And I think 160 ppm isn't twice as strong as 80 ppm are. So I think there's a non-linear behavior in this peat smoke. But still, it bites in my nose. There's some spiciness in the back appearing. Some lemon. And alcohol. I'm not the one who is able to distinguish between the the smoked salmon and uh, the beef, the smoked beef, and the uh, the barbecue smoke, and and this and this and that. Uh, whenever a smoke becomes too strong, then smoke is only rash, harsh. I need quite a time to get used to this heavy smoke. And now there is a little bit of oak behind. Not much because it's just five years old and I think there is a, a metallic note. Yeah, because it's so young. The heavy peat smoke 
covers this youthness of the whiskey, but as soon as you become accustomed to the smoke, this youthness is coming through. Yeah. I forgot to dilute this whiskey. Wow, I told so much about peat smoke and coverage and everything, I forgot to dilute. Quite sharp, very intense, but sweetness appears. A little oakiness in the back, a little vanilla, nuts, hazelnuts, maltiness, sweet maltiness. A distant sea, the seashore, some rotten algae. <laughs> More heavy. The first whiskey I tasted with such a strong ABV. Oh, good that this one is the very last day. So, <laughs> my toothbrush <laughs> this evening and tomorrow morning will lose against this whiskey. So this coverage of my tongue, the back of my mouth, uh, will stay until tomorrow. Definitely. It always, or a lot of times, that happened to me with whiskies with much lower ABVs. With a little water, more smoke appears, but this time it's more phenolic. Not so bonfire, more phenolic, more sea, but also more fruitiness and a little vanilla, yes, long and warm. The oak used for this five year maturation is American oak from ex bourbon casks. Oh, so the, the tannins and the bitterness won't appear. So this metallic note, which reduces by a so-called subtraction maturation, uh, is still there. And the additional maturation, uh, which comes from the cask, which adds aromas into the whiskey, isn't already there. So we still have some youthne youthness and not enough uh, maturation from the oak. So it's quite a young, very intense, rusty nail. No! <laughs> a velvet glove <laughs> around an iron fist. This was the iron fist and this vanilla and citrus is the velvet glove. And if I do not taste again, then I will not learn enough out of this whiskey. Not for my mother's son, no, not for me. Ah, very intense. This bottle is rare, really rare. It's beginning of uh, April 2014, and uh, you will be lucky if you find a bottle somewhere worldwide uh, later than summer. So this bottle is also very expensive, 100 30 euros, 150 dollars, and the later <laughs> the, uh, you move forward in the year, the more expensive the bottle will become because uh, the wholesale dealers uh, will hold some bottles back and release them for more money. The price will rise extremely to twice, twice, the, twice the amount in very short time. So if you're lucky and find a bottle, have your hands on it. No, it's not worth it from my point of view. Uh, but who likes very pity whiskey? This one is the very right one. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. Stay tuned and if you like this video, give me a thumb up.
Thank you for watching.